What our brains want to do is translate an exponential growth process into something like a glass of water filling up, things that grow at a constant rate over time. So what our brains do is that they take a few samples from the recent history and try and extrapolate from that. So when we're looking at exponential growth processes like a pandemic, that leads us totally astray. My name is Jeff Zox, and I'm a cognitive neuroscientist at Washington University. My laboratory is interested in how people perceive, understand, and remember complex information and how the brain gets this done. A lot of us have been spending a lot of time trying to understand exponential growth, and we've been looking at a lot of graphs of exponential growth. And those graphs from the beginning have been pretty accurate, but our understandings of them often are not. And I think it's led people to underestimate the rapidity with which an outbreak or a surge was gonna take over. What really matters is how fast is that rate of growth changing? That tells you how quickly things are gonna blow up. And with exponential growth, what happens is not much changes for a while and then it blows up. So how can we better explain that blowing up? One thing we can do instead of plotting the number of infected people in a community is to plot the number of uninfected people for each infected person. In other words, how big is the community of healthy people available to care for each infected person? Early in the game, you've got one infected person and a whole nation to take care of them. A few days later, each infected person has essentially a small city available to take care of them. A few days more, it's down to a small town. When you plot it that way, it's a lot easier to see how the situation is going to blow up and deteriorate quickly. So another strategy that we can take to improve our understanding of exponential growth is to build and inspect simulations. Early on in the pandemic, the Washington Post built this great simulation showing how infections are transmitted and showing that quarantining a country is an ineffective way of stopping an infection, but imposing social distancing is a very effective way of slowing down its progression. The last thing that we can do to improve our understanding of exponential growth processes is to just slow down. I can just stop and think, okay, what is really going on here? Do I really understand or do I just have the illusion that I'm understanding something, maybe misunderstanding, because the brain that I use to understand the real world is jumping on coming to a conclusion about this information visualization.